Hello and welcome to Fort Brock's Crypto Podcast. And this is our first episode, our intro episode. Number one. Number one. <laughs> my name is Neil Alonzo, and with my co-host and co-founder in Fort Brox is Brandon Heath. Brandon Heath. You said hi, Brandon, didn't you? Hi. How's hi. it going? So let's lead off with some disclosures. And it's important to do so because with everything cryptocurrency and Web3, we need to let you know that we are not wealth managers, financial advisors, or lawyers or CPAs, and we're not brokers. And everything with the we SEC, FINRA, federal and state laws, we just want to make sure that you know and that we've stated it that we're not telling you how to invest in cryptocurrency or how to do things in Web3 as an invest investment advice. Mm -hmm. We're just sharing our experiences with it and being in the crypto mining business because that's what we do at Fort Brox. Just two dudes. Who like crypto? A lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and we like, but the reason why we like crypto is one of the biggest things, right? Yeah. We like it for its utility. Don't get us wrong. We, we like the money. I like money. But our biggest reason with crypto is what it's going to enable people to do. Uh, yeah. The empowerment, the utility nature of it. Yes. The tech behind it. Yeah. That's yeah. the part of it where the real value is going to come out. And we're going to talk more about that, but... Uh, right now, we currently mine Ravencoin and Ethereum, and it looks like we're going to be expanding to five more coins throughout 2022. Yeah. Um, but from this podcast, what we want you to expect is just a lot of information, uh, things to look for, you know, how people are utilizing crypto, you know, the utility nature definitely is going to be a big portion of it. Yeah. Um, we're going to be talking with all sorts of people, whether they've you know, developed NFTs and done really well financially, if they're building stacks, tech stacks on, you know, different types of blockchains, uh, people who are just interacting with crypto in just really cool, interesting ways. We're going to be interviewing them, getting their take on it, because we'd like this to be a lot of information, because one of the biggest things we've learned in working with our card partners on the crypto mining side of things is there's just been a huge lack of information and the information that's out there, a lot of it is curated, you know, by a side that has an agenda, you yeah. know, an exchange makes money, whether we lose money or make money, you know, we understand that. But at the same token, we want, you know, just a bunch of information free. Uh, one of my favorite podcasts, not necessarily in crypto, but just full of free information is Bigger Pockets, which is a real estate podcast. So yeah. if you're a real estate investor and didn't, or you wanted to become one, if you listen to episode one to 500, you learn a lot. We hope one day, if people are like, I'd like to learn more about crypto, we'll just start listening to this podcast. Yeah. That would be awesome. That'd mean we're creating real value. Yeah. I, back in my 20s, when I was in uh, debt, I listened to Dave Ramsey all the time. Oh, okay. Just like, yeah. Just because I was like, oh, yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about. He can get me out of debt. And I was like, okay. Did Dave get you out of debt? Well, kind of, but he just, <laughs> he, he made it so that I could think in a way that would help me get out of debt. You know what I mean? Like he's got a lot of really good advice on just like tackle the, the small things first, like do those payments out. That way it's just like one larger payment that you can pay off over time and then make sure you pay that off. And so, yeah, debt free for a long time and, uh, just listen to him helped. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And it, it, a lot of times he says the same thing over and over and over, but just in, in context of who's calling in or whatnot. But it's just good to be reminded that it's possible. Like something like that. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. So this podcast, we're looking to push it out about 26 times this first year. So which is going to be bi-weekly. Um, every other Monday, we're going to be pushing out a new podcast for you to hopefully enjoy and find value in. Yeah. Um, just to kind of give you a background on what we do, because this is the intro episode, if you will. We're going to have guests on uh, on all the subsequent episodes, but just to kind of get an understanding of what you can expect. Just hit us with the subsequent. I like that. You like that? You like that big word? Yeah. like all those syllables? Yeah. <laughs> we, we mine cryptocurrency. Uh, we came up with a way that allowed us to be reciprocal in nature. It was a muse from stuff we've done in real estate and just we've worked with investors before in different ways but 
we were building out our own uh, crypto mining rigs and you know a lot of people are doing bitcoin with the asic machines and we were looking more at gpus and during right before the pandemic we were getting into it more and then during the pandemic we really got into it because we had more time on our hands <laughs> tons of it we had resources and yeah. You know, Brandon and I were looking at each other going, you know, how do we scale this? You know, how can we do it in a way that fosters more community, more reciprocity? Yeah. And we had access to GPUs, which a lot of people don't. At the at that time, especially. At that, yeah. <laughs> at that time, especially. Because remember, it was, I think GPUs were running. It was right before, uh, yeah, I mean, what? It was 3090s were close to like five grand. Is that how much they were? Yeah, in, in 2020, yeah, like yeah. the end of it. This is before China had uh, put the shutdown or the clamp down on, on Ethereum mining and Bitcoin mining. So, like, basically, they were made in China and uh -huh. then just never left. <laughs> and then after they, they did the ban on, on mining, you started seeing a secondhand market more where they started flooding. And, and the prices went down, but they didn't go down much. No, because, for instance, we run a lot of 3060 NVIDIAs. Yeah. Um, you know, how much were they in 2019? Oh, uh, yeah, about two grand. What were they before that? Like, lowest price. Oh, Weren't MSRP they? on them is 379 Yeah, right? $379. All the ones that we got came with MSRP stickers that say 379 Yeah, it's ridiculous. We did not get them for 379 <laughs> No, not, not, not at all. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, even now, you know, we're paying more than three seventy nine, but it's still a lot less than what you would find. Yeah. I mean, sure, you can find a few on eBay and other, you know, secondhand markets, like you said. Yeah. But, but it's who knows how how hard those were ran, what yeah. they were ran for, how long they were ran. So yeah. And can you run them at volume? Can you yeah. do twelve rigs yeah. at with twelve cards each? Mm -hmm. Can you do a hundred rigs with yeah. twelve cards? I mean, it's just. You know, it's a challenge, but fortunate we were very fortunate that we had, you know, access to supply. Correct. So during twenty twenty we started doing it more. In twenty twenty one we were like, How do we scale this? Yeah. So we saw as the GPUs were the biggest pain point mm -hmm. in building out rigs, more so. I mean, yes, there's a lot of other parts that still you know, we could have supply issues, but again, we're fortunate that we have access to them. But the GPUs became the portion that we were able to offer people. So now if you're somebody who wants to get into crypto mining, but you can't afford to build a whole rig or even the time that it takes, yeah. because if you've ever tried building a rig, it's uh, it's not as cut and dry as you would think. I mean, you can watch videos on YouTube. We did. Um, you can follow, you know, other people's, I guess, suggestions on Reddit, Discord, and it works sometimes. You can even buy rigs on, was it Etsy? Yeah, you can buy rigs on Etsy, eBay. I think I just I just read an article yesterday about somebody selling a six card thirty ninety rig uh -huh. uh, for sixteen grand. Yeah, which is I mean it's actually kind of a good price. <laughs> but but so there you go. Yeah. Does it come with the GPUs in it? Yeah, I think so. See, yeah. so you have all these different ways that you can get into it, but it does take work. After that, yeah. you got to run it. Oh, to let everybody know. When I say rig, I mean the actual full computer uh, with the GPUs inside of a hard metal case. Because we use a lot of mining terminologies because it is mining, but or it's called mining, but it's not actually mining. So a couple other terminologies such as rigs came over, you know. So, know. yeah, that that's actually a good segue and lead into one of our talking points is yeah. how do we put this in layman's terms for those who want to learn about crypto? Yeah. So you're not just getting lost in all the jargon because every industry has its own jargon, its yeah. own acronyms. So when we're talking about rigs. That was a good way of putting it. Yeah. GPUs are graphic processing, graphic card processing units. Yeah. And so, I mean, they're usually used for video gaming, which is what NVIDIA is. I mean, we'll talk a lot more about that, but... Over New Year's, a couple friend of my wife's friends came over, uh -huh. and she was trying to explain to them what we do or what I do with the GPUs. And I was like, well, they're, she kept describing them as hard drives. You get all these hard drives. And I was like, but they're not hard drives. They're GPUs. She's like, nobody knows what a GPU is. And I was like, 
But it's not a hard drive, babe. <laughs> babe, it's not a hard drive. She's like, but from, well, you know, layman's terms, like, what's the difference between a hard drive and a GPU? And I was just, there's my, a lot different. My mind melted a little bit. I was just like, <laughs> oh, okay. so so let's tackle what is mining, right? And yeah. I have an explanation I've been telling people, and you tell me your thoughts, Brandon. Um, if if I have my debit card and I'm going to Starbucks to get a cup of coffee and I swipe it through the machine, you know, that debit card has to transact to get that money to Starbucks. There's as many as 11 different hands, maybe more within that, you know, from getting the money from my debit card swipe to Starbucks, you know, whether it's Visa, MasterCard, very sign, you know, the merchant processing, that's why they charge, you know, 2.9% plus 30 cents like Square or Amex is 3.5% plus 30 cents. Anytime you're sending money. Anytime yeah. you're sending money, you know, that transaction has to happen. People have to facilitate that. An infrastructure has to facilitate that. And it's all centralized because it's controlled by these different by parties. Visa, by yeah. MasterCard. And so they in have that to process, verify that transaction. Yeah. yeah. And so that has to happen. It's a functionary, it's a utilitarian way of utilizing technology. But again, it's centralized. With mining, you're now a part of that transaction. So when people are using crypto, whether it's to buy, trade, sell, whatever you, you know, you're doing with it, that same swipe that happens with a debit card to get money to Starbucks is basically what's happening in the field of trading, selling, buying crypto. But those transactions need to happen, but it's decentralized. So instead of it only being controlled by those key players in the debit card world, it's controlled by anybody mining crypto. So mining, in a sense, in my opinion, is not a really a good way to call it. No. Because it's not like we're digging up for anything. We're just part of the mathematical equation that helps the transactions get fulfilled. Yeah. And we get rewarded for it. So that is, in a sense, our cut of the merchant processing fees. It's, yeah. But it's completely decentralized. You become the bank at that point. Which is awesome. Yeah. That, that part's pretty dope. That's, because... that's exactly the same way I describe it. Uh, I use less words, though. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're basically saying I over. Do you over. It. S over complicated a simple like explanation, which is you, you buy something with your debit card, Visa has to verify that that transaction took place. And then they charge the merchant a piece of money. We're going after that little piece of money. So we become Visa. All when you're mining. All miners. Yeah, all miners. Yeah. Yeah. There I mean, that's an oversimplification of it because what you're actually doing is like with Bitcoin or Ethereum, they have different um algorithms that you run. Different blockchains. Yeah, correct. Um, and then with these algorithms that verify this stuff uh, or verify these transactions, you're not actually doing that for Bitcoin. What you're doing is uh, you're. He's holding his hands in a circle for those who <laughs> don't have the video. We're because we're going to shoot video. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Later on our, our next show. Um, but what you're doing is you're completing like cryptographic puzzles. Yeah. And then that somehow really smart people figured out a way for that to verify. Supposedly but you're not Satoshi. actually. Yeah, Satoshi. Okay. So then yeah. in talking about. Do you think he's actually that dude from Wisconsin or whatever? I don't necessarily want to even go down that path. That's <laughs> okay. more your side of things. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> this I'm would really, be a good time for that jingle. <laughs> yeah. I'm really into um, uh, like podcasts that I listen to. I'm really into like true crime and. And uh, fantasy football podcast. So when I'm I'm building and setting these things up and bench testing them, uh, that's what I'm usually listening to. Brandon leads all of our builds and you yeah. know the the really hard work inside the actual fulfillment of you know what our value proposition is. But in talking about blockchains, this is something that I've also been talked about with card partners and basically anybody we talk about with cryptos, making the distinction of different blockchains. Yeah. And people have a hard time understanding that. Yeah. And the best way that I describe that to them is, well, think of different blockchains as different operating systems, different yeah. OSs. Like Mac never used to be able to play with uh, Microsoft. That's you an know? interesting way to put it. So you have Windows machines and then you have Mac machines. But those are two separate OSs. Now, yeah. they, 
we're not saying one's better than the other in terms of you know blockchain or ethereum but there are going to be programs that can utilize the ethereum blockchain and blockchain separately and simultaneously correct but that's something people have had a hard time understanding yeah. is that there's a difference between the cryptocurrency and you know the token itself and then the blockchains. Yeah. So that's how I've been explaining it to people is just looking at it as an operating system and you can choose which operating that's a, system. That's an interesting way to look at it. Um, interesting, like, that's a cool. good way? You yeah, like that? Yeah, like, cool. Yeah. All right. That's a cool <laughs> way to look at it because you have all these other coins that, uh, like, uh, the utility of Ethereum is that it's an easier programming language. So it, it, a lot of people build their coins off of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So, well, what about Ravencoin? Ravencoin's a fork on the blockchain. Correct on Bitcoin, on blockchain. Bitcoin blockchain. I should make that distinction yeah, again. Yeah. We're having this back and forth. Yeah, which is, I mean, it's cool in its own right, and it's trying to do what uh, Bitcoin wasn't intended to do. So, Bitcoin is like a store of value. Started out trying to be a currency, but became a store of value because it's so expensive. How would you describe what is a fork on the block Bitcoin blockchain? Like, what is a fork? Um, a fork would be an update to your OS. Okay. So, like, you have Windows ninety five. Okay. And then, boop boop boop, Windows ninety eight comes around, and it's like, hey, what's up? I'm Windows ninety eight. But Windows put out that update. Yeah. Whereas in this particular case, Ravencoin is putting out the fork. Yeah. So it'd be like another party so building like, on top of Windows. Yeah. Which, I mean, they're both built on, on uh, what is it, Apple's technology anyway. Linux? Yeah. They yeah. stole it from. Okay. That's a whole okay. other story. <laughs> yeah, See, right. again, let's stay on crypto here. See, <laughs> okay. so we can go down all kinds of rabbit holes. So this is also a good segue, and it kind of follows suit with some of our disclosures, is that this podcast, it's not political. Not but. No. But we are talking about regulation as it relates, especially in the United States, yeah. with uh, state taxes, federal taxes, the governance by the SEC. Um, there's just a lot of different things, IRS, on how they're wanting us to classify it. Yeah. You know, accounting of it, you know, it's an asset, but you're not able to do all the same things that you would a normal asset, like a house or yeah. personal property, per se, like a car. Um, so, there's a lot of things that we're going to be talking about that are going to kind of overlap with certain, certain political sides of things, but we're going to definitely going to try to remove any points of view as much as possible on the political side just to focus on the crypto side. Because at the yeah. end of the day, regardless of your politics, we just want to make sure this thing flies because we're big fans of what it can do. Yeah, The idea of decentralization, the security side, uh, again, the utility side of things, those are the things that we're big fans of. So, um, what we're one, so we're going to have a little back and forth since this is our first episode and we want you to kind of get an idea of what you can expect and get to know us a little bit. Brandon, you know, how did you get into crypto? Let's see. Um, in about 2015, a friend of mine was like, Hey, you should buy some Bitcoin. And I was like, number one. I don't know what you're talking about. Number two, like, where do you buy it? Let's do this. Um, never really ended up pulling the trigger on that. It wasn't until Coinbase came out that I could actually start purchasing it from, like, exchanging Fiat 2. Um, and I think that was, like, early 2017 or maybe late 2016. Okay. When you are actually able to start putting in money and then exchanging it for different cryptocurrencies and back then it was really limited to bitcoin ethereum and i think that maybe so my friend justin and i found this uh little website out of singapore i think it was at the time okay. or china called binance yep <laughs> so once we discovered little Binance, <laughs> yeah it was a little website at the time and then we could send our uh money that we put in to coinbase change those into ethereum or bitcoin or litecoin at the time was the easiest and fastest to send so we'd send all our litecoin over there and then change it into coins that we liked and and followed at the time like uh justin sun on twitter 
and got real into Tron. Okay. And that backfired, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> so I, I just got really with him, got really into trading it and, and, you know, just seeing market conditions. And then, uh, after the big dip after 2017 or near the end of it in December, when Bitcoin took a dump from 19,000, that's when I just was like, okay, I better hold off on this. Yeah. And then I held off. I mean, I, I told you I was trying to figure out mining. So I started mining Doge on my, uh, you mined Doge? Yeah. I was mining <laughs> Doge on my iMac. Uh, and then after that. That's funny. Yeah. Why well, Doge? Uh, just because it was pretty much the only one at the time that was mining hardware wallet. So you just download the full wallet or desktop wallet. Right. And then it mined for you. Yeah. So it was just running its algorithm, giving you coins. You know, with unlimited supply, you're like, oh, okay. Do you still this have some cute. of those today? Probably. Pro- what do you mean probably? None I'd, of them are in a wallet? It, yeah, they're probably just on that iMac. I just have to take it out of the closet, you know? Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. I, I should do that. Yeah. I'll, I'll report back and see what's up with that. Yeah, I'm curious about that. Yeah, maybe I'm a doge millionaire. No, nah, you didn't You didn't actually get that many coins from it. So Yeah. Yeah. Um, you weren't really focusing on like, you know, no, it was just something fun to do because it was like, wait, you can just let your computer sit and then collect these coins. I mean, at the time they were worth 0.0002 cents or something. So they're worth nothing yeah, at all per yeah. coin until Elon is like, Hey, what's up with Dogecoin? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's but true, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And then so I, I kind of sat on it, sat on all my Binance stuff. And then um, a coworker of mine was like, uh, in the summer of 2020, when I first went back to, to work, uh-huh. he was like, have you seen HBAR? And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so then I rode the HBAR train into the new year and then, Yeah. Fell in love with trading again. Yeah. So, yeah. That makes sense, man. Yeah. How about you, Neil? <laughs> what got you into crypto? A uh, friend of mine, Derek, yeah. he he worked at Apple at the time, and we were, you know, just talking about different ways to invest, and I was starting to get into real estate with my friend DeVille, and, you know, it was, there was just a lot of change happening at that time in my life um, after the agency. And we were doing RSVP law and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, We were looking at different things and he's like, hey, you know, we have some GPUs. We have these graphics cards sitting around. Um, We can mine Bitcoin with these. I'm like, really? I've heard of Bitcoin. You can mine with those? What, what is, you know, what the hell's mining? Yeah. And so he gave me like a little bit. Well, if we run these, you know, we'll get Bitcoin. I go, okay, well, let's try it. You know, so we put it in my garage. We were living by the coast at the time in uh, North County, San Diego put some in my garage, got them running. And, you know, we got a few, I think, you know, we put them on a flash drive. <laughs> Still haven't found a flash drive. Uh, but, you know, I, I had some running in the garage. And, yeah. You know, it, it was just an exposure to it. We're not and talking didn't even like think about it. Lost 300. No, Bitcoin. no, no. I don't. Okay. It's nothing like that whatsoever. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be super bummed if it was. <laughs> but that was my first, you know, thing. Yeah. And I wasn't even paying attention while it was happening. It was just like, you know, a brain fart. Like, yeah. let's try this. You yeah, know, yeah. why not? And so it did. It did its thing. And then it got super hard right at the end of that summer. And it was like, oh, okay, we're not really seeing anything. Let's just turn them off. No big deal. Yeah. And, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll sit on this. You know, fast forward to 2019, and this is a completely different world. Mm-hmm. And I was getting more into it at the time of 2019 because I was looking at different ways that we could utilize technology to streamline some of our financing that we do with uh, our real estate. Yeah. Because we were working with mobile homes and mobile home parks. Yeah. And it's treated like personal property. So we were doing seller financing on it and stuff. And Brought to you by High Form. I know, right? No, this is, <laughs> okay. this is no plug. No plug. <laughs> but so we were looking at different ways of how we could build a tech stack around our financing platform. And that's when... I was asking around and we were talking about it and you mentioned about Ravencoin. Yeah. That was one of them because they do asset tokenization and smart contracts and 
when we started talking about it, we started talking about mining and yeah. we were working out of Hollywood at that time and I was bounced between there and that spot in Venice and yeah. we were just looking at different things so we started talking more about it and, and then like, I said, hey, can I bring in this computer that I have <laughs> laying around and mine Just let it run? Off? Yeah, in the office? Yeah, I'm like, sure. And she split it with me. Yeah, and, and that like, was the deal. Okay, yeah, cool. we'll split it with <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's a reciprocal relationship. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so... Look where it brought us. You it know? did. So. It, you're essentially what made the whole bug rebite everything again, because then I started looking to it, doing the due diligence, and yeah. we've known each other for so long, and, yeah. you know, we've worked, you know, within companies with one another and yeah. things, and so there was already... You know, we've already been through enough fire drills working together. Yeah. And we had a lot of great resources, some years on us. We'd like to think a little bit more, I don't want to say wisdom, but we, we know how to fail. Let's just say we both have a lot more grays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we definitely have more grays and, you know, uh, just a lot more of how to move forward, yeah, right? How to be sure. more mindful about things and how we actually go about building something. And And collectively like we have the same ideas on how a, a great company can be successful and still foster community and you know push that out yeah we have a lot of the same values you know the way we like to treat people and yeah hopefully it gets you know reciprocated in that way yeah but anyways that's how i got into it and then that's how i got reignited by it, it was by you and yeah. everything we started mining with and now you know we're this is our job yeah. <laughs> and it's awesome. It's so much fun right now. You're welcome. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> I like that late night DJ voice. Yeah. Just get real close to the mic. Just like Chris Voss's. You ever heard, have more. you seen that book, read that book, listened to it? Never no. split the difference in negotiating book. No. Oh, he talks about the late night DJ voice is something that makes people feel at ease. Yeah. They don't yeah. feel as intimidated and you can negotiate a lot. Yeah. With more clarity. <laughs> What's uh one of the your favorite books on crypto? So if somebody was wanting to learn about crypto, you don't have one? No. Oh, really? I've never read a book on crypto. You haven't? No, unless you consider Reddit or uh No, no, I was going to get to that. that don't don't jump ahead on my questions oh, okay. here. <laughs> uh let me <laughs> So one of the books that I really oh. like when it oh. comes to learning about you know, cryptocurrency and all things, and it kind of paints a picture of Web3 a little bit as well, is The Age of Cryptocurrency by Paul Vigna, I believe it is. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. And Michael J. Casey. So card partners, we usually send them a copy of this book on Audible. This isn't, you know, a promo or anything, but it's one of the books that I send to people when they don't know a whole lot about it and they want to learn more only because this gives you a little bit of history. But the best thing I got from this book is it gives you the canvas. Yeah. It it shows you that the canvas is massive for crypto. Why didn't you send me this book? I thought you read it. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I thought you read it already. It looks like I have some homework to do. <laughs> but I, I really enjoyed it simply because it's tangible in a way. Yeah. Uh, when you're listening to it. Digestible. Yeah, it, it's it's an easy listen. I mean, there are some things you can get lost in as far as some of the jargon, but it kind of leads you up through it because, again, it gives you a history lesson, and then it gives you the canvas. That's the biggest thing. You're not going to deep dive into any one thing yeah. in the book, in my opinion, but you will get a broader perspective of it. And the thing that I like about it, again, I keep saying it, is the canvas. Understanding that the limits of crypto isn't just related to something like gold. That's the biggest thing in my opinion is that getting past the idea of it as relating it to gold. Mm -hmm. You know, it I think it's one of the mental hurdles people have because when we talk about the return on investment of crypto mining, it's wildly volatile, right? Because crypto in general is changing 24/7. Yeah. So the stock market, you know, it's only open certain times. Yeah. And crypto, you know, obviously yeah. as we've seen with Doge, People can tweet about it, goes up, goes down. But at the end of the day, people. <laughs> well, Cuban, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Started, you know, not just yeah. Elon, but you know, there's a lot of others. I mean, Patrick Byrne famously dumped yeah. a lot of money into Raven. Yeah. You know, so I mean, there's all these different influencers of cryptocurrencies value, but at yeah. the end of the day, again, we believe that the long term value is in the utility. Correct. And yeah. very much, I still believe that 
cryptocurrency, you still have to hang on to it for a while for yeah. it to realize its gains. I mean, yes, we're hearing about Bitcoin billionaires, but and they're how young long, people. How long have they been into it? They've been holding on to it. I mean, I've had yeah. a few phone calls from people saying, "All right, I'm ready to get you know crypto rich," and I'm like, "Whoa." <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't happen that fast. No, it doesn't. Like what we're doing today is setting us up for tomorrow type mentality. Yeah. It's very much uh, Benjamin Graham's, you know, in The Intelligent Investor, a lot of those. That book I have read. Okay. It, yeah. It's it's very much the long play game. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you have to believe in it that way, at Correct. least from our perspective. Again, we're just sharing our experiences. We're not telling you how to invest. But again, it it comes down to those things. Uh, but getting back to getting to know a little more about us, yeah. what are some of the podcasts that you listen to about crypto? Uh, got a friend, Crypto Daily, Dustin. He uh, just talks about like a coin or something that he. Uh, it's very easily digestible, and then, you know, he breaks down certain coins just daily upon it. So, uh, or just random topics, you know, okay. like Web three or or some other topic that relates to crypto and you know the direction that it's going right right yeah okay. what about you me i've been searching for yeah. different podcasts to listen to and you know obviously one of the genesis of why we are wanting to start this one is because yeah. a lot of the things that i learned in real estate and you know even things like how i built this by guy Raz, you know he's yeah. interviewing people who built you know, yeah, different companies. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. I'm a big fan of those. And it's almost like I'd like to see some of both, but keeping it very tangible because it is cryptocurrency is nothing to be, you know, like it's not something I can learn. You know, I've heard a lot of people say that. Even people in their late 30s are like, ah, just wait for it to do this or something. Yeah. And it's like, no, because they think it's going to take so much more time to learn and understand. And then you have people who are much younger who are very aggressive about it, but. Yeah, I get the questions like, I'm ready to get rich today. You know, yeah. so I'm going to buy this on Monday and I'm going to start, you know, partying on Friday. And it's like, it doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. So I've been listening to anything from real estate podcasts, you know, like Recode. Or, yeah. And just listening to all these different podcasts that end up having an episode about crypto. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that, that I have for sure. So uh, was it Brian Armstrong? Uh CEO of Coinbase or founder of Coinbase. He, he was, was on, on how I built. Yeah. He was on how I built this, and it was a good listen. Yeah, you know there were some things about it that you know really interested me. Other things, you know, yeah, I mean, just, helped get me into it. You know, or help, well, <laughs> gave me the avenue to be able to pursue it. Wait, that just came out. What? <laughs> That podcast episode. No, I'm saying Coinbase. Oh, Coinbase. My bad. Yeah. That's right. You talked about that earlier. I was like, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> that just came out. Um, but yeah, so in that way, so we're but, always on the lookout for other podcasts. Yeah. You know, we hope ours creates value, but we're always looking for others. And like you said, your one boy, he has a podcast that you find value in. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. The art director of a TV show I work on sometimes, uh, we were playing golf the other day. Uh -huh. And he said that his buddy has him uh, buying e-gold uh e-g-l-d mm -hmm. and then he's like learning how to stake it and like all these other terms and he's like i i i have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> and i'm so lost and whatever and i was like but at least you're like wanting to learn and you're doing the steps like you're you bought the e-gold yeah. or you bought whatever and then you changed it into e-gold um, and then now you're on a platform where you're staking it and just learning about those steps and like what you can to do, yeah. like hard stake, soft stake, validators, like there's so much jargon and proof of get, work, proof of stake. That's yeah, such a can, hanger for people. Yeah. You can get, it took a you lot get really time, yeah. lost in, into all of it. But if you, you know, stick with it and put some money away. Well, hopefully we, yeah. you know, we keep figuring out ways to talk about it with other people that we have on the show. And, yeah. you know, it starts to resonate with people. Maybe one person articulates it a better way than we ever could. Yeah. And it'll really stick with somebody who's listening. Yeah. Um, another question I have is how do you find out and stay on top of the latest information? Because there's so much noise right now yeah. out there about this. Like, how do you stay on top of it? Reddit, I mean, I know we have resources. Reddit, Twitter. I mean, honestly, like... uh well, how if do you filter I, through I see, the noise? If I see a coin that I like or I'm interested in or somebody tells me about a coin, 
first thing I'll do is see if they have a Twitter. If they have a Twitter, I'll go to the Twitter and be like, okay, great. Then I go to the Reddit community page. Because a lot of times on Reddit, and yeah, that's that's going to be a lot of noise as well. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see a lot of people shilling their own coins, like being like, hey, get rich off of XYZ. Bomb. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. And you're like, okay. You know, or you hear... Anyway, so yeah, we're not looking that, to blast anybody. We yeah. want a, this to be a positive. The way we look at it is very positive. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of people shilling coins though. But you know, you go on to Reddit and then you you see a coin that you like, then you go to their community and see if it's good or positive, or like see what they're talking about. Like, are they trying to build bridges? Um, and a bridge is to be able to convert your coin to a different coin or right. back like um harmony one just built a or they're working on a bitcoin bridge where you can go straight from bitcoin to harmony one and then you know yeah but if you want to see like what what's valuable about harmony one or like how many developers there are like how much how many people are are interested in this project and what they're doing because of that interest in that project you know when i first joined harmony one's reddit page it only had twenty thousand followers now i think it's up to fifty thousand people just talking about it looking at it so it, it's that's how i come upon my information yeah i mean obviously we, we work now with other people that we call analysts and stuff yeah. we able to keep our fingers on a lot more of the pulse but i have been searching out articles um i'll we'll put some in the show notes yeah um for different topics but yeah just constantly searching out things talking oh. within our own private slack channel and going on different discords yeah um some of the discords that i go on and you know i subscribe to or you know become a member of it's just i just want to hear their perspective on it you know uh, when i have justin on yeah or when we have justin on uh, let we can have fun talking about our when we first were getting into it and getting on Binance and trading, yeah, and going after those pump and dump schemes on Telegram. Cause yeah, you join a, <laughs> a you join a, a a page, a Telegram page. I don't what do they call them channels there? <laughs> I think it's a Telegram channel. And then they would drop a a pump and dump. Uh, I don't know. I'll I'll tell you about it. I later. know Justin's definitely. You know, been more of a cowboy when it comes to those things oh, he's than cowboy. both of us, for sure. Well, I mean, we were both on it, but then we realized we saw, like, what those actually are, which is pump and dumps. Yeah, yeah. Somebody gets into that way before you, and then they sell right after they drop their hype. And, yeah. like, like a lot of these, you'd have, like, 30,000, 40,000 people in this one channel waiting on this thing to drop. I don't think I ever got into any of them like which is uh, i don't know it's great uh-huh yeah yeah but i'd watch them and i'd yeah. watch like what happens with the the value of it yeah it would spike incredibly and then just drop instantly so yeah, yeah i don't know so that'll be a fun when we have Justin yeah, on yeah. and yeah. You, know, you get to hear about all those things for sure so what are some of the coins you're hyped on right now? Well, definitely Harmony One. Love that coin. Um, it just has a really positive user community. It's uh, a proof of stake coin. They have a lot of they have a lot of active developers which are working on the coin, uh, trying to improve its functionality. You can send it for very very cheap it's one of my favorites to actually um send cross-platform like if i'm trying to send some coins from binance to kucoin boom boom right love it um let's see what else um shib i'm hoping makes me a gajillionaire i'm just <laughs> kidding i was like i'm looking at you going really really i remember yeah. this conversation yeah i'm a shib millionaire <laughs> Uh, I have <laughs> millions of shib. I think we all kind of do. I think everybody does. I mean, they dropped, yeah. you know, a few hundred bucks and got a couple million shib. Just let's see what happens. Let's yeah. roll the dice. I love Raven. Um, just like their asset tokenization, their management. 
Raven RVN, if you want to find their ticker. What about H bar? You still like an H bar? I love H bar. Yeah. Okay. What about um, V chain? V chain. I don't know. I'm not. I, I don't mess with Chinese. You know what I mean? I'm still a fan. That's not entirely true. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your wife is, is Chinese. Is Chinese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <and> that's yeah. true. <laughs> what about Toko? I uh, love Toko, man. Love Toko. Yeah, Toko is probably the diamond in the rough in all these yeah. coins. And for those listening, we'll be diving into more of what we like about different coins throughout, you know, future episodes. You yeah, know, we'll share. You maybe know, pick a some coin and we'll go. Yeah, there's you know, thousands of them. So. Yeah, I mean, maybe we could just do due diligence if you are, are listening. You. Say, hey, can you look into this and say, what are yeah. the pros and cons? You know, maybe we'll strip one down and just kind of yeah. give it. Um, again, we're not also, trying to you, blast any of them. We're just trying to find yeah. what's the value in them. Just, what, what is the value? Because yeah. some have great utility Yeah. for the tech stack, but some of them, maybe they don't have as great a utility, but they have great tokenomics. Great, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And how would you describe to somebody, because it's something I get all the time from card, uh, partners and other people I talk to about crypto, what does tokenomics actually look like? Like, what are you looking for? Just some of the layman's ways of putting it. Like, what are you looking for? It's the economics of the token. Meaning? Meaning, um, how much money do people have into this, invested in this token? Okay. So with like Bitcoin, you're over, you're getting close to a trillion dollars or it's a half a trillion dollars. I forget. Okay. Um, but you see something like a market cap like that, you're like, wow, okay. Uh -huh. And then you take how many token are in existence, which is like, I think with with Bitcoin, it's 168 million, something like that. Or, but there's a finite supply. So you yeah, want yeah. coins so a with finite supply. a and cap. Then, yeah, how many are actually in circulation and then you have a max uh, total supply. Yeah, because so something like max supply. like SHIB is infinite, right? And so no. is Doge. Doge is. Doge is, okay. Doge is infinite. Like, they can just keep printing those forever. Right. Because it's a joke coin. But SHIB yeah. isn't. No, SHIB has a, a max total supply of, I think, What's... One, 1 trillion or 100 trillion or something. <laughs> oh, okay, so it has know. a cap. <laughs> it does. It does <laughs> it's just have a, a massive cap. cap. Yeah. What's funny about the notion of Doge is a joke coin is that yeah. it's been said. I mean, yeah. this isn't an opinion. That's why he created it. Yeah, but at the same token, no pun on play of yeah. words, but if enough people say it is a value mm -hmm. and companies are willing to accept it as a form of exchange for, yeah. let's say, buying a movie ticket or getting food, yeah, it becomes inherently value Yeah, if it is adopted in that way. True. I, you know, again, we don't have video, so your facial and, you True. know, body yeah. gestures are definitely saying a lot, but it, it's something very interesting about the journey we're on with crypto. A lot of yeah. people ask me, you know, where do I think we're at with crypto? You know, we've talked about this so yeah. much and, you know, we talk about with everybody we work with, but essentially I'm of the opinion that, you know, it's the early nine or late nineties, I should say. Yeah. And that's kind of where we're at where it's still early. Yeah. Yes, Bitcoin has been around, what, for a decade, right? Yeah, close. Close to a decade. But it's still early. Yeah. It's still super early. It's super early. You know, like we've we, we've seen clickbait headlines like, oh, the Netscape of crypto has just come out. No, I don't think it has <laughs> in that way. I don't think there has been a bellwether of anything that's come out. I mean, Coinbase, I mean, these are exchanges and it allows people yeah. to utilize it. Yeah. But you know, those are exchanges. Well, last year, the big thing was DeFi, which yeah. decentralized finance. And then, you know, a lot of these bridges that you were able to um, exchange coins and freely. Now, to, you know, and yeah. the hot buzzword right now is Web3. Web3. Yeah. Web3. So, like, for instance, define, what, what do you see Web3 as? Um, well, currently, I feel like it's a, a huge buzzword, but, like, what it is is... is a website knowing that you are you by connecting your wallet to it. Whereas like previously, previously web, web 2.0 is uh, signing into your Google account and then having to two FA in by like pressing a button on your phone. So it's a validator and it's just yeah. becoming that much more or it's becoming smarter. Yeah. You know what exactly. I mean? The verification process is becoming even more 
so so it validates yeah. all these other elements and then and then um like cross across platforms so like yeah. when you buy a, a piece of artwork an nft on on somebody's website the web3 portion of that is connecting your wallet and then that wallet knows that it's you because when you sign into this other website OpenSea or or rarible they know that's you and they know that you own that nft so yeah. it populates in your own so it knows it's you just going through each one of these things so you don't have to keep uh signing up you know and yeah no remembering it, passwords you just have to have your one wallet connected which so, is cool yeah because people ask us i all think the that's time cool yeah about nfts and you know everybody thinks about you know board ape yacht club yeah you know cyberpunk getting rich you know but the utilitarian value of it hasn't been realized yet and one of the examples i give people is saying you know say you had a car on turo like say you and yeah. you know three other friends so four of you all chipped in and bought a prius Mm-hmm. and you all own whatever percentage of that Prius. Yeah. Well, if you created a token out of that Prius and you know it's connected via Wi-Fi, there's a lot of utility that can be built into that, you know? I mean, within the ledger of the token itself, you know, the NFT you created, you could eliminate what Carfax is doing in a sense. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, not eliminate, it's evolving it, right? Yeah. It's taking it to that next level. So now the car is a token, you know how many miles it's driven, when the oil's been changed. Yeah. You know, what the electric charge like, what's its distance like, yeah. how many times it's been rented through Turo because you can create a DAO, yeah. a decentralized autonomous organization mm-hmm. to manage the asset of that car for you. So when Turo pays out, yeah. you know, every month, how many times it's been rented or whatever, it would automatically distribute the proceeds of that uh, monthly rental to all four people who invested in the, that particular Prius. And people look at it and go, it could do that? And I go... Well, it, the you, canvas is there. Are you pitching me an idea right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the funny thing about yeah. all things early with crypto is that yeah. we hear some amazing ideas. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it can be executed if people put you know time into it. I mean, we have a few ideas that we're going to sit on for a little while just because you know they're close to us and we think they can be executed. But things of that nature, I mean, that technology is now available to us to create that. Yeah. The idea that instead of having to go to the DMV or if when you buy a car, it takes all that time filling out the paperwork and being registered with the DMV. Mm-hmm. And I'm a f- big fan of uh, CarMax and their process. Like, I love their process. Yeah, that's where I bought my last car. Because I reverse engineered that for another business within the mobile home business. But I would go in there and I would talk Brought and meet to people. you by High Farmer. <laughs> 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 well, there's so many things relatable, but that, that's a whole yeah, other yeah. story. But you're in CarMax and you're filling out your paperwork to take your car home, you know, no haggle pricing, you know, it, just the whole process of it was, it is so much different than just if you go to a lot of other dealerships and a lot of uh, companies and apps right now, like True Car and those types of services are trying to do the same thing. I mean, Carvana, Carvana and, yeah. you know, Tesla, you can order when it gets delivered to you. you yeah. Know? So they're already trying to make Tesla the, accepts direct. Damage. Well, oh, there you go. <laughs> so. But having said that, instead of having to wait through all that paperwork, you could just scan it. Yeah. And it's done. It's registered with the DMV. Yeah. You know what I mean? You already have everything in place. You know, you could tokenize your car to where you don't have to wait for the license plate. Yeah. You know, there's so many things that can be built as a result of crypto-based technology. It's not just these currencies that are being compared to a fiat such as USD. Yeah. It's... So, that's I the mean, biggest thing. Where you're going with this, like that, a lot of the tokens that I like yeah. uh, do asset tokenization well. Yep. Like Raven. Uh, and and you have the ability, I mean, I, I just, we're definitely looking for more real world applications in, right. in the space. But to take a, um, uh, take like, I guess I was looking at my coffee, right. which is empty, but uh, I'm trying to find something. Well, let's go with a car. Because okay. a car is a great example. to Because you have VIN numbers with these cars, yep. and a VIN number is a hash. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, a digit hash, or it's right. like, a, like ones and zeros and numbers and everything. So that is 
basically a block. Okay. And so to be able to take that and then just auto or automate the rest of it would be super exciting. Although I don't know if the somebody like the DMV will ever get behind something like that, but but it's <laughs> it's big thinking and it's it's really cool way to express it i guess well yeah i love I mean, it when you start bringing up stuff like again this is where politics start crossing over because you talk about nationalization and <laughs> you know what i mean because a lot of what crypto is supposed to do is decentralize a lot of these elements yeah so why couldn't cars be titled and registered yeah. in a decentralized environment yeah you know you, you can For avoid sure. the longer wait lines and you know i don't know about you but if you've ever tried to go get a real id with your current id it's kind of a pain in the ass, man. Yeah. Um, it baffled me to no end that I couldn't come in with my existing driver's license and as that. a valid form of identification to get yeah. my real ID. You needed to bring in your my birth certificate and passport. And, all, passport, all and, all and I'm stuff. thinking, wait a minute. So I'm at the DMV. Yeah, they gave you know the driver's license they you know issued to me maybe two years earlier because I had it renewed. Yeah. They did not accept as a valid form of identification to get my real ID through the DMV. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at them and I'm not even getting mad. I'm just asking questions and I repeated just what I said to you to the yeah. person I'm talking with. And they're like, no. I go, what about that doesn't make sense? And they're like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it was just the most random of things. And then finally I got somebody who's a little more human about it because, you know, I'm sure they have to deal with crap all day and dealing with shitty people. Yeah. <laughs> Um, because, you know, nobody ever really looks forward to going to the DMV, and especially in a world of COVID. No. But it just, again, this goes back to the technology of crypto yeah. and what it can do. It could uh, it could eliminate that pain point in our infrastructure, if you will. Absolutely. So stuff like that. But I mean, so in tandem with what we're talking about, yeah. a lot of people always ask, you know, what is... What is it about it that makes it so traceable? You know, what makes it great or how are they tracking? And I'm like, it's written to the ledger of, let's say, a token, you know? Yeah. Think of it, and I tell people, think of it as a FedEx tracking number that yeah. never goes away. Yeah, like your VIN number on it your car. It always shows. So yeah. every time it does another transaction, a new FedEx tracking number is attached and you can always look it back up. I mean, yeah. it's not, It's again, it's not Netscape ready to look up. No. But it's there, it's written. Mm -hmm. And so that's when, you know, a lot of that data, metadata is yeah. going to, that's where the utility comes in play. So, yeah. Um, what are some of your favorite crypto apps, Brandon? Crypto apps. Yeah. Or, I mean, let's talk a little bit about exchanges and wallets. Like, what do you use? Uh, I use Binance, Coinbase, Trust Wallet, MetaMask, KuCoin, uh, the Raven Desktop Wallet. Do you uh, use any cold storage? Cold storage, not yet. No. No. Okay. Actually, no. I I I'm. I like taking my chances, rolling the dice on that. You know, <laughs> uh, just because like I feel, even though I'm really good with, with, uh, hard drives and stuff. Uh huh. But getting a hardware wallet like a Trezor, just kind or a of, ledger. A ledger kind of freaks me out. I don't know. Because you feel like you're going to lose it, yeah, but they have a web-based portal. I have two cats. What if like one pees on it or something? I don't know. <laughs> so and then saying... I lose all my stuff. I'm like, ah, yeah, you know, like that dude in England who lost two hundred million dollars in Bitcoin yeah. worth of Bitcoin by throwing out the wrong hard drive. It's now buried in a. You know, oh. You've never heard that story. I mean, I've heard so many horror stories. Yeah. This, I mean, there's a but lot that of horror. One is like, I mean, that's a bummer for sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't, there's no they had thousands of them <laughs> of Bitcoin. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I get it. Yeah. I mean, I'm with you on all those same wallets. Yeah. Uh, I am a fan of cold storage, but I'm I'm definitely I have OCD with how I organize certain things. Yeah. So that's yeah, you do. It's to my. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> So it's to my benefit that I do it that way. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> At least in this particular case, right? Yeah. You know, finding the silver linings here on this. Um, but is there any other apps um, that you like using that are crypto right now? That are crypto related? Yeah, maybe dApps. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. Love it. <laughs> like Rarible. Yeah. I like them. Because they upload to OpenSea as well, right? Yeah, you can you can sell your stuff on OpenSea after you mint. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. I do I do like the functionality um that Web3 is providing, like I said. Mm-hmm. So I bought an NFT and then it automatically registered so to my uh OpenSea account. So now you can see my NFT on the OpenSea, you know. Yeah. That's that's pretty magical. Do you want people to see yeah, why your not? NFTs? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. my it's my uh my uh twitter profile oh you know oh that's right yeah, yeah yeah okay also if you guys hear this podcast and made it this far if you want to leave us uh, a comment or something about it what you liked what you didn't we'd love to hear your feedback we're on twitter at fort brox f-o-r-t-b-r-o-x that's our instagram handle and that's also an Instagram handle. And our TikTok handle. And our TikTok handle. Those are the only three we're working with right now. Okay. I mean, we have Discord and whatnot. Yeah. But yeah, those are the three that we're primarily focused on. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that's as great a time as any is to segue into our outro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think Brandon's done. <laughs> uh, no, I'm I think kidding. we've got a really long intro uh, podcast. So There you go. But I, I like it, and I'm happy if you guys make it this far. So yeah, no, he, he is just so you everyone knows Brandon is definitely one of the most humble uh, people without malice in their hearts. You know, it's hard to find those people in this world and he's definitely one of them. Oh, so thanks, it's, man. yeah, you're welcome. What can I tell you? I've known you a long time, Yeah, that's you true. know, and I've, I've known a lot of other people a long time and yeah. you definitely are good people. Thanks, man. Yeah. So thank you uh, for listening to this intro podcast. You know, we hope that um, in the coming episodes you like the guests and who we're talking to, what we're talking about, and hopefully it's coming across in an informative way. Please leave, you know, a comment, shoot us a DM, uh, you know, share with others if you see value in it. That's always nice, you know, and appreciated. Um, you know, we're not going to, res- you know, resort to any of the smash the subscribe button type protocols here, but you know, if you find value in it and share it with others, that's always good. So until our first episode and our first guest coming here soon. Yeah. We hope you enjoy and we look forward to, you know, sharing how our experience with crypto. Can I be the hype man? Four Brox. <laughs> Four Brox.com. I don't know if people will tune in after that. Okay. <laughs> Later. Bye.